Hi, this is Jillian Stockdale from C21 BJ Roth. I am a realtor in Simcoe County and Muskoka. I have a website which is sold on stockdale.com and I would love to have a chance to work with you. If you're having the opportunity to listen to realestatepodcastshow.com. One, four, three, two, one. Hey, Jillian. Hi, Paul. Welcome to the realestatepodcastshow.com. Uh, you know we've been trying to get our, our, our timing together on this and, and getting you on the show, so I'm really excited that you're here. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here as well. Yeah, so start off by letting everyone listening, because as I said to you, and I don't, I don't hide any of this stuff, this is basically like me and you having coffee except there might be, you know, a few hundred or a thousand people listening. I don't know yet. <laughs> Depends on how interesting this coffee conversation is. So let's start off by just uh, introducing you uh, to them and uh, let them know who you are, what you do, and um, anything you want to add. Sounds great. Well, my name is Jillian Stockdale, and I am a realtor with Century 21 BJ Roth. I have been in the business for, well, actually, it'll be 18 years next month. Wow. So I've been around for a while. I live in um, Severn Township, which is uh, just a little bit north of Aurelia. Um, and I was born and raised in the area. I just turned 50 uh, last month. So I know quite a bit about the, um, the area and the neighborhoods and the ins and outs. Um, I have a husband that I've been um, with since 1987. Yes, 87. Mm -hmm. And wow. I have uh, two daughters as well. One who will be uh, 23 next month and the other one is 18. So my husband's also a teacher and I grew up in a teaching family as well. So I have quite a good uh, knowledge of the um, area as far as schools go too. So previous to being in real estate, I uh, had worked for an interior design company in Muskoka and spent quite a bit of my time up there. So when our office um, opened up a brokerage in Gravenhurst, I was one of the first ones to jump on board and say yes, because I love Muskoka. I had uh, grandparents who had a cottage on um, Taylor Island on Lake Muskoka. Okay. And then my other set of grandparents had two cottages on Perry Island up on Georgian Bay. So I grew up in that space and um, absolutely love it. It Great. is one of the most beautiful spots. That's amazing. And that's obviously the thing that I want to come through here, because as much as I will mention your name to people who are moving up that way, and we've done a lot of moves together. We um, have. <laughs> yeah. So that's the good news is we, we, we sort of have our rhythm in place. So all you guys who are listening have to do is if you're making the move from uh, anywhere in the Toronto or GTA area, and you're making it up towards Barrie and the area that Jillian serves, it's literally just um, emailing me and letting me know, okay, I, I'm thinking about making a move from here to there or from there to here. And either way, you'll be connected to both of us so that, again, you you're literally get sort of put right into the conversation uh, from two people who know their areas uh, very well. Again, I'm, I'm a lifelong Toronto um, resident. I'm born in Scarborough. Uh, I live in the Danforth area. So I, I, I know the city and, and the out, outskirts pretty well. Uh, and then when it comes to up there where you guys are, uh, I leave that uh, I leave that, you know, that part up to you once uh, once that connection's made. So um, that's really important, I think, for again, for everyone listening to sort of understand what Jillian's talking about in the areas that you, you know, that you can explain in detail, make the difference between a random tour uh, from someone who, you know, may know the area, but doesn't know the stories behind those areas. I think that's going to make, uh, you know, for everyone listening, I think that that makes, I, I hope the difference for you when you're uh, making a big decision, like, you know, a move from, uh, Toronto, for example, to Barrie again, like we've done together before. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that is really important working with somebody who has the um, extensive knowledge of the area 
And, um, you know, being a lifer certainly helps as well, too. Yeah. Um, you've got some, um, as you said, you know, knowledge that uh, that other people wouldn't. And, you know, it's it's not to say we don't see um, agents from out of area come up and um, do sales, but um, you really are better uh, serviced, so to speak, um, by using somebody who knows the area. You know, I, I've, I've had these conversations and I think we've had them as well about the uh, which areas we're allowed to serve. Now, obviously, we are allowed to handle, you know, any place that we can, um, you know, that we know about. And, and I don't I know it's different for each agent, because let's say the agent grew up in Barrie, lived there till he was 30 and then moved to Toronto. Chances are. He can still probably handle Barry pretty well. He probably yep. knows it pretty well. So that's, you know, a, a case by case. But as far as me going up to Barry, aside from for concerts and for shopping, uh, uh, which is the <laughs> only reasons I've been to Barry uh, and to visit friends, I don't know the stories. And, and I would not even think of these as much as I, I would send up like really, you know, people that are really close to me. Um, I wouldn't even think to start sort of randomly trying to figure it out. Uh, you know, how the markets work, because just like with Toronto, uh, in some cases, it's like five minutes from one area. There's a completely randomly, um, completely different area in terms of its, you know, what it has and uh, pricing uh, in Toronto anyways. But uh, I am sure there's those, um, you know, uh, what do you call the peculiarities? There, there's certain things about your area, and of course, with yep. all the the waterfront and all that stuff to to factor in, uh, exactly, it just, it just makes so much more sense for me to say, okay, here's you know, here's the introduction, and 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 then and so on and so forth, and uh, and right now, and this is what I wanted to cover today on our top on our podcast is just because I know how many people uh, are talking about making the move from the. Um, you know, from the higher priced areas. And I'm just going to use where I live as the example, because uh, when I look at, uh, you know, sort of the, the home price changes in the last year alone, um, it just kind of makes sense for, for me to sort of uh, to use Toronto with the, you know, the average home price being a little over 1 million uh, in, in 2020 for uh, as far as, you know, how, how the prices have gone up about $100,000 since last year. Whereas for you in Barry, and this is obviously from the stats that I, I was talking with you about, uh, average home price, and, and you you may you may uh, have different information, but uh, I've got it down as five fifty six, nine yeah, thirty two so, as an average. Yeah. So I I don't uh, I, what my area that I work is really quite extensive, and yeah. um and there are a lot of different pockets. So okay. I mean. I look at um, Simcoe County as a whole. So, okay. I mean, that is including Barry, it's including Aurelia, and it's going all the way over to uh, Midland and uh, Penetanguishene. And then it goes all the way over to uh, towards Brecon in uh, Romero okay. um, and as and high up as um, Washago. That's, that's the expanse. It, okay. It's quite large. Yeah. Um, so when we look at, um, at homes in Simcoe County, um, like currently right now, there's 516 properties that are active. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a huge range, like anywhere from like, I think, 4.3 all the way down to about 240,000. Oh, wow. but, okay. but the average for sale right now is just right around 700. Okay. Okay. And oh. so then I look at, at our close for the, um, for the past, I went by like, I looked at like 75 days. Cause I mean, you need to sort of get a bigger expanse with, with COVID and what's yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. True, um, true. And amazingly enough in 75 days, this is just a residential three bedroom detached home. Mm -hmm. We had in 75 days, 251 properties close. Okay. Average was like between 3.85 down to about 293, but the average was around 520. 520. So, okay. so yeah, but again, that's yeah. including a huge, huge well, area. Well, that's obviously, that's the point of averages is really all they do is they kind of, they help a conversation happen, yep. but they're not real numbers. Just like in no. Toronto, the 1 million mark is again, it's, it's way in the middle. There's 500s and then there's 5 million. So 
Um, we really have to be specific on location, but I think the general conversation here, just cause we're going to make the math easy, Jillian, we're not going to yep. uh, try to confuse anybody. So my point is the reason why it does make sense. And of course, uh, this varies from city to city, but if you're, if you're moving up that way and you're in the five to 700 range and you're moving from here where you've got a property that's, let's say between eight and 1.2, like that's a pretty big range, but that's, it's just it's just easy to say it. So roughly a million to roughly you know five or six hundred thousand, uh, you end up moving from a place like this, Toronto, and 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 some of the outskirts that are doing really well, Oakville, for example, Vaughan, Richmond Hill, uh, and you're making a move up that way. You're you're able to sort of make the move um, and sort of have some money left over, which I think these days. Um, is more important than ever to have sort of the option to say, you know, I'm moving with a million, I'm going to spend six or seven, and I might have, you know, two or 300, let's say, as the, um, let's call it the, 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 the future, um, you know, sort of the security fund, so to speak. Yep, absolutely. Um, you definitely get more bang for your buck in Simcoe County and in Muskoka. There's no Good. two ways about it. Um, I've And I've had clients that are doing exactly what you talked about. Um, they are moving up from uh, Toronto and the GTA and they are selling their million dollar plus properties and they are buying properties either on the water or that have some more, I, I like to call it elbow room. Yeah. So that yeah. it's, you know, more air to breathe and things like that. So well, that's why I wanted to talk to you specifically. I like to talk to people who have stories to tell, and I know you do, uh, but also you're active, meaning that you're actually, you know, talking to people from uh, Toronto and GTA, uh, even in the last couple of months when things have been, uh, yeah, very, you know, sort of, upside down with the pandemic, uh, trying to uh, do what we do, which, of course, uh, you know, we've had to adapt uh, in many ways and pivot. Um, so what's a conversation that someone from, again, my area is having with you, even, either on the phone or in person? What's, what are their biggest concerns? Because somebody listening is probably thinking the same way. So a lot of people are concerned about the area that they're moving to. They want to yeah. know that it is going to be somewhere where they're not moving out into the bush, yes. you know, that they're going to have um, facilities close by for shopping and transportation and things like that. There's a lot. And uh, internet is a huge conversation. Point well, there you go. Because, That's because, something I wouldn't think of. But yeah, I yep. guess when you're up there, that might not be so connected. Absolutely. And the great thing is, is that a lot of the properties, rural properties are connected, which is wonderful. Um, and a lot of people who are looking at moving up from Toronto and the GTA are still working from home. So they need to have the um, availability to have good internet um, so that there, there's no issues. Um, then you get into other things about um, the the location and um, you know is this the amenities nearby um, size of home seems to be fairly important as well too um, but we're, the more the, probably the most driving factor has been waterfront okay the, a lot of the people who are moving up this way want to have some sort of water on their property, okay. whether it's on the river or if it's on a lake or even if it's a great big pond. Um, but there seems to be this push that if they're going to be moving out from the big city, that they want to be able to have it as a vacation home, but it's their year round home as well. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I, I totally understand people wanting to move out of the city. I'll be honest with you. We've talked about it over the yep. years. And uh, obviously, the, the things that have to come up is, you know, the trade-offs. So um, for people moving from here, I would think that they would have a lot of those questions to have uh, answered, which, again, uh, is important why I want them connected to you uh, and vice versa when, you know, the people that are making the move, which probably isn't as often from your area down to here. Um, then, of course, I'm the one answering those questions as to, you know, how does it compare to, you know, where I'm living now? And uh, very often it's not very comparable. I mean, you know, the Toronto, uh, especially if they're moving anywhere near the downtown core, uh, is a whole different uh, experience. And uh, I know what it is because I'm there, you know, 
almost every day, but I don't live in the core. Um, right. I like living on the outskirts. I'm actually in my area of the Danforth. I'm just in an area that in the, the in the 1930s was considered the um, outside the city limits okay. where, where my property is. So I kind of think sometimes, you know, I, I kind of feel like a rebel because I live on the outside of the city limits, even though it's completely part of the city now. But at one point, anyone living in this spot uh, would have been considered a, uh, you know, a rebel or maybe a, <laughs> a, 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 you know, some sort of a pioneer of some kind, just living on the, you know, li- living out in the bush, literally, um, right? Because there wasn't anything here in 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 those days. So um, helping people again on the other side of the equation, which they don't know you, they don't know me, um, but the podcast. What I'm finding, and this is this is how this amazing thing works, is that uh, I'll get a phone call from someone like in a couple of days that has heard us talk. Uh, and they want to jump in the conversation. And it's only because, um, you know, you brought up, you know, oh, yeah, what is it like, uh, uh, you know, as far as connectivity? Because, again, my job uh, is allowing me to to work from home from here on. Um, and, uh, you know, how to, and, and, you know, for example, if I have to get back uh, to, to this, you know, to Toronto or GTA, you know, what are my options? What, do, you know, what are other people doing? Are many people driving? Do most people take the GO train? Um, so any of that kind of stuff, which of course we can't get into all of it today, um, right, but right. it's good that, again, it's good that you've heard those questions and, and sounds like, again, from what you've mentioned, there's a, uh, there's a few sort of, um, important points people want to know right off the bat. Yep. Absolutely. Great. So, you know what, I think that really, uh, sort of helps wrap up, uh, what it is that, uh, that I'm trying to explain to people about where, where, where you, uh, you know, where you live and, uh, you know, why, it, why it's so important, um, to be, un- to be understanding and understand how a referral relationship works. So what I do, uh, to those who are listening, when you, when I'm connecting you to Jillian, um, is I simply try to make sure that I'm handling your needs, of course, here, uh, to the best of my ability. And then when it's time to make a move up towards where she is, uh, and I'll have her uh, repeat the areas that she handles. Um, and uh, w- when you're making that move, it's simply is a matter of me setting up a referral form for you, which means um, between, uh, between Jillian and I, there's a referral fee that, that's handled, whether I'm sending someone to her or she's sending someone to me. But the good thing about it is for you guys listening is there's no additional cost to you. So you're the ones benefiting from it, but it's all part of um, sort of how our compensation structure works. Um, and you can get literally two really great agents and, and not have to pay for, uh, extra for, for right. that privilege. So, um, a lot of people, again, ask me that question is, you know, how does this referral stuff work? Well, it's kind of like your doctor. He, he looks at your feet and he doesn't know what's going on down there. He's got to refer you to the foot doctor. Um, and they have their system and we have ours. And the best part about it is if I, I mean, obviously at a, at, at a younger age, I'm in my forties now, but at a younger age, I might have said, yeah, sure. Let's drive up to Barry and look around. Even then it wasn't really, again, it wouldn't have been the right thing to do. And I never have, but it wouldn't have been the right thing to do. And I know there's people I read about them that are, you know, driving from Toronto to Ottawa, uh, to show houses. And, um, I mean, no, uh, yeah. you know, I, I, I wouldn't even, you know, and I've been, and I've been to Niagara a hundred times, still wouldn't sell a house there. Still will always refer up to, you know, Mary up there, Absolutely. but, um, but the, uh, but the, the way it works is again, just because uh, someone says that they can do it, I think that's one of the reasons to question. So the, you, those of you who are listening, um, understand that if someone says they can, you know, take you from Toronto to Niagara, to Barrie, to Ottawa, you've got to sort of sit there and think, well, how can they possibly, you know, do their best for me here and there? Unless, again, that's the disclaimer, and and I've said it myself, unless they've lived in one of those areas uh, and they know it like the back of their hand, that's the only, I mean, to me, that's the only real way it can be done properly. I'm sure that someone's going to be yelling through their phone. Uh, you know, you can't tell me what to do. <laughs> uh, but as far as I'm concerned, that's the only way I will do it. And that's because I've um, had my own uh sort of uh, getting used to the different parts of, uh, you know, the Toronto and the GTA and knowing how comfortable I am. I'm comfortable from, you know, Oakville to Oshawa in that area, right up to, um, 
as far north as Richmond Hill, Aurora, those areas, those are areas I'm in every month. And I've grown up in those areas. I've played hockey and rugby and uh, have family in just about all those areas. So I, I know them very well and I, I, I feel comfortable there. But, uh, you know, anything past that um, hour mark uh, north of the city, uh, you know, they're, they're going to somebody else. And, of course, you're, uh, you're one that uh, many of them have gone to. So is there anything you wanted to add so that, uh, again, people can uh, obviously I want to make sure they know how to get in touch with you uh, and, and know which areas you service so that I can uh, make sure that we uh, uh, tell them uh, clearly which areas they can, uh, you know, rely on your help with. Absolutely. So as far as areas that I cover, I kind of do the same thing as well too, Paul, as far as a, um, um, a time frame goes, I look at um, sort of the maximum of about an hour to an hour and 15 from my exact neighborhood. So yep. I'm looking at covering anywhere from uh, Barrie over to uh, Midland, Penetang, Honey Harbor, um, all the way up through Muskoka up to um, about Rosso. I don't like to ha- go over to Perry Sound because it's just a little bit too far. Okay. Um, up to up to Huntsville and Utterson, and then all the way over to uh, Brecon as well too. So it is an expansive area, mm-hmm. but again, having grown up here and worked and lived in all of those areas, then there's you know no issues. Yeah. Um, I do um, I do sell a lot of uh, waterfront as well too, not just uh, residential sales. And um, everybody seems to be looking for the cottage because of uh, of COVID. They know that it's um, going to be a long time before we're going to get back into the traveling. So they want to be able to have a spot that they can hang their hat for their family vacations and getaways. Um, we're also seeing a lot of uh, properties that are being sold for um, rental purposes as well, too. Mm-hmm. So that is um, a big increase that um, I've found this summer anyway that I'm working with clients on. And, um, yeah, as far as getting in touch with me, um, you know, you can contact Paul. I have a website. It's soldonstockdale.com. And it's, I'm really easy to get in touch with, um, texting and emailing, uh, phone calls. I try to answer every phone call when it comes in and I get back to my clients very quickly. So don't feel like, you know, you send a message to me and you're not going to hear from me for like hours. That's not the case. Yeah, uh... yeah, I I hear you. And I I, I agree with the being reachable. And and I also understand that you've got priorities. And like myself, again, obviously, I'll I'll say it right on, you know, right on the air as well, that I don't always answer every phone call in, in the exact moment sometimes. Um, there are other things going on. And for that reason, I, I, I do try to get back to people. And of course, texts and emails and all that are uh, easy to do. But I think the good thing is overall, your pattern has always been about, again, taking care of my clients uh, and, and vice versa, me taking care of yours and, and us being in communication, um, you know, regularly versus having to wait uh, you know, too long to, to hear back. So I think, you know, the fact that we're both busy and, and we're, we're both, you know, again, technologically uh you know adept uh i think will help people understand that you yeah you're definitely in good hands with the both of us um and hopefully your move up to cottage country will be as uh, smooth as possible and i i definitely want to hear uh all about you know all of you who are listening that uh, have those kind of dreams because uh really just sometimes a, a phone call uh, you know with jillian could be enough to uh, sort of just take the nerves off of the of the whole idea because it's it's I mean moving is always big but um, with the right people it can be um, it can be very smooth and I and I think that's been the case with us as we've uh, done pretty good about making people feel comfortable on that uh, on that ride. Absolutely. So thanks again, Jillian, for joining me. And I'm just going to count us down. And uh, we're basically uh, going to call it a day. And hopefully we'll uh, talk again soon. So Sounds five, great. four, three, two, one. And thanks again, Jillian. Thank you. Okay.